what are the normal curvatures of the spine? When discussing normal curvatures of the spine, the first question we have to ask is why is the sp spine curved in the first place? And the reason why is because the natural curves of the spine make the spine stronger, makes it deal with, deal with mechanical stress occurred during movement and the result of compression forces that gravity will have in the spine, kind of like a cold spring. Also, the normal curvatures of the spine also make the spine more flexible while protecting very important structures like the nerve system and the vessels that go through the spine and exit out into the body. When we look at different sections of the spine, we know they have different types of curves that are associated with them. The first section is the cervical spine, then the thoracic spine, which is in the mid-back, and then the lumbar spine, which is the low back. And the spine actually looks like an S when you look at it from the side. It has a curvature in the, from the neck, a curvature in the mid-back, and a curvature in the low back. When we look at the different types of curvatures, we look at first thing being a lordosis. And a lordosis bends towards the front of the body, and a kyphosis bends towards the, backwards of, uh, the back of the body. And this lordosis and kyphosis is work in conjunction with each other to act like a spring or an S shape from the side. What we don't want to see is that these curves going out of their normal ranges, but there are normal ranges for these curvatures and they're meant to, and they're normally measured in degrees. And a lordosis is typically found in the cervical and lumbar spinal sections, and a kyphosis is found in the thoracic spinal section. A, a kyphosis also exists in your sacral area, but that is fused by the time you're an adult, so that's normally not altered or can change. But however, a, the cervical spine and the thoracic spine and the lumbar spine can 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 go in and out of ranges based upon injury, posture, and trauma, and different things that can affect the body. The normal ranges of the cervical lordosis are between 20 and 40 degrees. Normal ranges for the lumbar lordosis is between 40 and 60 degrees. And the thoracic kyphosis normal range is normally between 20 and 40 degrees. So what happens when we lose these normal ranges? Well, first thing is the entire spinal biomechanics are disrupted, even if only one area is affected, because remember, these curvatures work in unison. They work with each other to provide the very best compressive um, adaptation of forces over time, especially with gravity, since the spine is a weight-bearing, uh, compressive structure of the body it has these curvatures to deal with these compressive forces. Once you disrupt one curvature, you affect the biomechanics of that area and every other area because each spinal curvature is dependent on the others. The spine can also unfortunately put in compensating curvatures to deal with the lack of curvatures, meaning if we lose side curvatures, a normal side view of the spine, we can start developing curvatures from the front. And in many cases, when we see patients have curvatures from the front, they have lost or have gotten too much curvatures from the side. And this, and this affects the way the body deals with compensating curves and the spine's overall health and function is effective in a negative way. When we start to lose curvatures from the side and start gaining curvatures from the front, this is what we call scoliosis. And a scoliosis is development of an unnatural sideways curvature of the spine that's being measured from the front view. And that's where it should not exist. The spine should be completely straight from the front. These curvatures normally have, not only do they have a curve associated with it, but they also have a twist or a three-dimensional rotation that's occurring. So the spine actually curved and twists to create a three-dimensional misalignment. And the majority of time, they also have loss of side of curve. So if all things are being affected in a negative way. They have a loss of sagittal, they have a loss of front view, and then they also have a twist going. Now, for this to be diagnosed truly as a scoliosis, the curve must be 10 degrees or greater measured by a Cobb angle. A Cobb angle is a measurement that's done on a spinal x-ray, and it's normally taking the top vertebra with the most tilted uh, bone, comparing it with the most tilted bone below, and measure the angle between these, cur these two bones. If it's 10 degrees or greater with rotation, we're saying the patient has now a scoliosis curvature. And like I said, most patients with scoliosis will have a loss of normal sagittal alignment, which leads to the, these compensating curves being developed. Now, what we don't know is what comes first. And this is it'd be an interesting uh, uh, thing to understand is that do people lose sagittal alignment first and then gain scoliosis? Or do people get scoliosis first and then lose sagittal alignment? We don't know, but we know one predisposes the person for the other.
So anytime we see scoliosis, we examine the sagittal view. Anytime we see a loss of sagittal view, we examine the front view to see if there is any scoliosis. So there is a natural range of normal curvatures from the side, but once the patient goes beyond these natural ranges or these normal levels, problems can occur. And these problems can occur, it can affect the biomechanics of the spine, which can lead to lots of dysfunction, pain, and, and the body's inability to deal with gravitational forces. And it can also now start developing compensating curvatures like scoliosis. And here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, not only do we treat scoliosis, but we also treat the, the normal alignment from the side like hyperkyphosis, loss of lordosis in the cervical or lumbar spine, because dealing with this three-dimensional spinal alignment is the best way to deliver long-term lasting results for the patient. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.